Hey, what's up? Matt from Chipbot here, and today I'm going to talk about how to use triggers. But before I jump into that, I wanted to quickly explain why you need them to spur user engagement on your website. In a recent Nielsen Norman scrolling behavior and tension report, 43% of users immediately scroll down to look for high priority content on your website. That means 43% of your traffic are scrolling down, skipping past your number one headline, and looking for content that's useful to them. Interestingly, 10 years ago, in 2010, that traffic was only 20% following that behavior. So the trend is increasingly skipping above the fold content. On top of that, users only spend up to 15 seconds surveying your website. So you don't have a lot of time to make a good impression. This is where chipbot triggers come in. Triggers capitalize on your user's irrational scroll behavior by allowing you to promote content when they scroll to a certain section of your website. This gives you a window of opportunity to initiate engagement, like telling your user about your latest blog article, or to provide feedback on your checkout experience when they're on the thank you page. To create a trigger, go on the left-hand side of your dashboard and click Triggers. From here, let's add a new trigger. For the content, this is actually where you put your call to action, or also called CTA. So what I want to promote today is uh, we have a new product update. So I'm going to put in here, learn what's new on Chipbot update 1.7 symmetry. Um, once you have your content in here, you can do actually a few other things. You can format it, change the heading style. You can also add images or video. Uh, this is the image icon, uh, so you just click this and upload anything. Or you can click this video option and insert a YouTube video. So we have two more options right below. One is a status, whether it's live or not. And the other one enables you to say, only show this trigger if the user has never seen it before. So after we get our content all configured, the next we want to set is our trigger action, or what should this trigger do? So if we scroll down here, under action type, there are five different types. One is open chipbot, where when the trigger is presented to the user, if you click it, it just opens up chipbot. The, the second option is open insight, where if the user clicks the trigger, it opens up a particular topic in your knowledge base. The third option is Get Feedback, which allows you to collect um, an MPS score from your user using the emoji rating system we have. The fourth option is Collecting a Question, so presenting a user a, a search box to ask or find a, a topic or answer in the knowledge base. And the last one is Open URL, which is used to help drive traffic from one page to another. So today, I'm just going to use this open URL because I want to drive traffic to my update article. So for the URL, I'm going to point it to my blog article, just paste it right here. I'm going to leave it in the same tab. And then for the call to action, I want it to say learn more. And then I only want to show this trigger on the home page. Once I'm done setting the action, then the only last part is when to actually show the trigger. When should this activate? So this section is where you can set the scroll percentage. This is pretty important because this is where we determine how we want to move our users along or how we want to promote content to our users. So there are, you can set it from zero to 100% where 0% opens immediately and 100% means you have to scroll to, all the way to the bottom of the page. But there's three key configurations that um, work well with our customer base and our users who are using Chipbot day to day. First is the 1 to 2 percent range. This means that Chipbot won't open immediately, but the user actually has to scroll a little bit to see what the action is. This allows you to capitalize on the, that moment where the user visits your website and just immediately starts crawling. The second option that we see is around the 25 percent mark. Because after users are more inclined to know uh, or already know a little bit about you, this is a great time to say, here's how you move forward. 
just in case they don't want to read the long tail content that's below. And then the other final option, which is actually my favorite, is a percentage near the 90% range. This is an important range because they, your content is being consumed by the user for the majority of the time. So right when they reach the end, if you don't have a strong call to action already on your page, this is a great way to show a trigger to move the user along. You don't want them to just go to the bottom of the page and leave. You want them to go to the next step in their journey, in the journey that you're controlling. So we'll set this to 90% and we'll hit save. Once we save this, we'll go to our home page. I'm going to refresh here. We scroll down, scroll down near 90%. And you'll see here, this is our chipbot trigger. This is a notification. So triggers are always open near where your icon's positioned. If you have your chipbot icon more on the left hand side, then the trigger is going to be on the left hand side. Um, and then here you can see the content we entered and the learn more that we set. And we have a couple different options to, um, to interact with this. We can hit learn more or we can close. If we hit close, just close with the trigger and that's the end of it. If we hit learn more, it's going to go to a product update, which is exactly what we wanted to promote on the home page. Now, this is just a simple trigger, a simple call to action, simple way to drive traffic. There's two other types I want to show real quick. So the second example I have is actually showing the feedback option. So let me show that real quick. What I wanted to do is I wanted to know if people were receptive about this feedback post. Sometimes I don't really get that information when they only click it, you know, we send these through an uh, email newsletter so we can see the CTR rate, this click through rate, but we don't know if they actually liked it or not. So this is a great way to get that feedback. So on that same call to action where it went to the blog page, I actually set a different trigger here where if you scroll down, again, near the end of the content, it shows this feedback option. This gives us really good information whether we're doing the right thing for our users or not. You can use this to improve other aspects of your content too. So for example, on a different page, uh, on a different article, we actually have this similar feedback option, but we more or less ask, what are your thoughts about sharing this article? How likely are you to share this article? So we can at least gauge whether the article is useful or not. Sometimes when it comes to SEO, the, the users, the traffic that are coming from Google won't really say how well this article is, but if you give them a, a guide, how, for example, like how, uh, what's the shareability factor for you? Um, they're more, more likely to provide feedback that you can actually act on. If they're not willing to really share it, that's an important note for you to say you need to improve some of this content. So it gives you some really good information to improve SEO. The other final example is using the question trigger. So I'll give you an example here. On our features page, we have a lot going on. Uh, we talk very technical. It's going through a lot of new concepts for the visitor. So what I want my visitors uh, to experience when they hit the end of the page is just a simple uh, trigger asking them if they have any questions. So if I scroll down, similar, I, I use generally nine, the 90% scroll for most of my triggers, but if I hit right around this level, um, I, I actually am using an image this time. I just ask, hey, uh, what kind of questions can I answer for you? And my goal for this is to just enter any question. Regardless of the knowledge base has it or not, it allows me to capture this. Capture what, uh, what are they thinking? Um, what kind of questions um, did I anticipate and what are surprises for me? Everything that's being typed in this box is captured by Chipbot. So it's super important information for you to improve your website and ultimately improve your uh, self-support experience with Chipbot. If you have any more questions about triggers, please reach out. Thanks for watching and make sure to stay subscribed to our YouTube channel or email newsletter so you get notified on more guides like these. See you later.